Bet you 20 bucks. Make the shot just the way I made it before. Nobody can make that shot, and you know it. Not even a lucky lush. It's flower power on film and swing on the silver screen. Welcome to WatchMojo.com, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 decade-defining actors of the 1960s. Car's thirsty. Can I please have some water? For our series on the top 10 decade-defining male actors per period, we've made our choices based on a combination of their commercial success, their box office scores, their productivity, their awards, and how they helped set the tone and raise the standard in Hollywood for the era. What are you waiting for? Number 10. Warren Beatty. All right, now. It's the stick up. You just take it easy and nothing's going to happen to you. Honey, give me the money. Give me the money. A cinematic stalwart, Warren Beatty's illustrious film career began with a role opposite Natalie Wood in 1961's Splendor in the Grass. I don't know what's the matter with me lately. I, I'm always losing my time, Verlin. You're the only girl in the world for me, don't you know, Latini? A movie concerned with love, Critics loved Beatty's performance, and he was nominated for a Golden Globe. I'd like to go away to a good agricultural college for a couple of years. I, I'd really like to do that, Dad. Beatty would star in many a 60s movie, but his overriding achievement was Bonnie and Clyde. He produced and acted in the movie, which was nominated for 10 Academy Awards. Beatty's box office power was, from this point, indisputable. All right, all right. If all you want is a stud service, you get on back to West Dallas and you stay there the rest of your life. I always say, make a married woman laugh and you're halfway there with her. Of course, it don't work with a single bird. Number nine, Michael Caine. My name is... Alfie. Alfie. An actor who could be considered a defining figure in more than one decade, for Michael Caine, the 60s were especially special. I've always had a fiddle on every job I've done. He was scouted for movie work following his work on the stage, and Cy Enfield, the director of Zulu, was particularly drawn to his Cockney accent. Yes. Then get on with it. Ironically, Kane ended up playing an upper-class officer in the film, but became famous for more modest roles. The womanizing character Alfie and his part in the Italian job confirmed him as the working-class hero. Every restaurant, cafe, ice cream parlor, Gambling Den and Nightclub in London, Liverpool and Glasgow will be smashed. Well, I'm glad that you're enjoying yourselves because you're going to be here for the next 20 years. Number eight, Peter Sellers. Sellers' film career was as varied as his lifestyle. What are you suggesting? He played out quite destructive family relationships off screen but had us all laughing hysterically when he was on it. It is not only possible, it is essential. His role as the bumbling Inspector Clouseau in The Pink Panther is among the best remembered. A character devised entirely independently, Sellers' work during the five weeks of filming has been compared to the great Charlie Chaplin. I've really got him this time. <laughs> Dr. Strangelove is another great Peter Sellers performance, or three. That's right, his versatile ability led Stanley Kubrick to give him three parts, and he sold every one. Sir! I have a plan. <laughs> Monsieur! Has it worked? My friends call me Tanya. Mine call me James Bond. Number seven, Sean Connery. Uh, James Bond. Universal Exports. The name's Connery. Sean Connery. As James Bond, the Scottish actor appeared in five films, beginning with 1962's Dr. No. You did the right thing, but you picked the wrong moment. He understood the role perfectly, and that's because partly he created it. No, we can't all be geniuses, can we? A lot of the mannerisms, personality traits, and one-liners were written into Ian Fleming's novels. Clap. But Connery brought a swagger and an accent that the writer worked to include in later books. Is that clever? He couldn't, however, provide everything. Connery had to wear a toupee to play Bond as he'd begun balding at 21. Well, we can swim or... Uh... Or what? Come here. 
Number six, Peter O'Toole. Well, that's a step in the right direction. This actor's big break came in one of the biggest films of the decade. That's right. Lawrence of Arabia earned O'Toole the first of eight Oscar nominations for Best Actor, though he never once won. Come on, then! He continued a tendency towards epic roles, playing Henry II twice, once in Beckett, Well, Thomas Beckett, are you satisfied? And once in The Lion in Winter. Oh, God, but I do love being king. By no means a one-trick pony, though, O'Toole also paired up with fellow decade definer Peter Sellers in the Woody Allen scripted comedy What's New Pussycat. Now listen to me, Pussycat. Times are hard, and I'm in a hurry. All right, Marshall, what do you say I've done? Number five, Clint Eastwood. You don't remember me, do you? No. When you hang a man, you better look at him. The Spaghetti Western, so-called because of the Italian directors behind them, is an iconic film genre of the 60s, and one in which Clint Eastwood ruled. You see, that's what I want to talk to you about. As the man with no name, he portrayed one of the most convincing anti-heroes ever captured on film. You see, in this world, there's two kinds of people, my friend. Those with loaded guns, and those who dig. You dig. The part was supposedly offered to Eric Fleming, Eastwood's co-star in the TV Western drama Rawhide. He turned it down, and Eastwood went on to own it. Forever after, his name would be synonymous with the wild, wild west. No thanks. I'll be moving on. I've got him downstairs under a John Doe. Number four, Steve McQueen. He tried to nail me with a shotgun. A Winchester pump. A break into the big time was thrown Steve McQueen's way when Frank Sinatra recast the role of Bill Ringa in his movie Never So Few. Yeah, well, these warlords or troops or who the hell ever they are, they just didn't knock off a convoy. They've been killing our men. He gave the part to McQueen. McQueen had lots of screen time, and Hollywood had their new it guy. I didn't say could. All I'm saying is that sometimes you bend with a breeze or you break. From there, success streamed into the 60s with The Magnificent Seven and The Great Escape. You're crazy. You think so? McQueen became known for tough guy roles and fast car chases, a feature most apparent in 1968's Bullet. He was handsome, he had attitude, and boy, could he accelerate. You believe what you want. You work your side of the street, and I'll work mine. I'm a police officer. Number three, Sidney Poitier. When trying to achieve success early on in his acting career, Sidney Poitier struggled because he was tone deaf. He couldn't meet the expectation of black performers at the time because he couldn't sing. Now that's not exactly what I had in mind, but you get the idea. But years of dedication were finally followed with acceptance and excellence. In 63, he became the first black man to receive the Academy Award for Best Actor for Lilies of the Field. Her skin is white. My skin is black. The commercial peak of his career didn't come for a further four years, however, when Guess Who's Coming to Dinner became an instant classic. I can explain. I can imagine what's going on in your mind. <clears throat> but we can explain. Where do you live? Around. Number two, Paul Newman. Ah, oh, it couldn't be him. He's one of the few actors to successfully carry his movie career from the 1950s into the 60s, 70s, and beyond. Now, Joe, you can't afford to get worked up, buddy boy. That's likely because his rebellious streak entertained and resonated with younger generation after younger generation. Come on, Charlie. Who's gonna beat me? Okay, okay, nobody can beat you. Roles in movies like The Hustler and HUD stand out from the early part of this decade, Cool Hand Luke earned him his fourth Oscar nod, and a partnership with Robert Redford garnered him even more fame. What do you think? As the former in Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid, he saw the 60s out in style. I don't know where we are, but it sure as hell is in Oklahoma. Before we unveil our pick for decade-defining actor of the 1960s, here are a few honorable mentions. Mr. Reddington, I'm no writer. Now, Jim here is brilliant and witty. He uses words like a stiletto. He learned his trade from Mencken and Ingersoll, Sinclair Lewis, a lot of other atheists. It's not Picasso I'm calling about. It's the key to my apartment. You're supposed to leave it under the bat. But I did, didn't I? 
I distinctly remember bending over and putting it there. Oh, I found the key, all right. Only it's the wrong key. I don't know exactly how to put this, sir, but are you aware of what a serious breach of security that would be? I mean, you'll see everything. You'll, you'll see the big board. So grateful I cut tonight's party meeting. Oh, oh well, thank you for putting me above history. No, it's because of my infernal weakness for flattery. You see, Fermoil, I'm incorrigibly vain. Oh, not about my personal charms, but about certain accomplishments that have nothing to do with my function as a priest. Number one, Gregory Peck. Why me? By the beginning of the 60s, Gregory Peck had already been in the film acting game for over 15 years, but his best was still to come. It's an agreement reached by mutual consent. Now. Here's the way it works. He'll be forever remembered for his portrayal of Atticus Finch in To Kill a Mockingbird. Released at the height of the civil rights movement, it spoke beyond the screen. You never really understand a person until you consider things from his point of view. Yes, sir? Till you climb inside of his skin, walk around in it. The Guns of Navarone was another surefire success. How could you hesitate? And Peck filled the boots of a lawyer once more with distinction for Cape Fear. His gentlemanly charm and masculine edge win him our top spot. You're gonna live a long life in a cage. That's where you belong. And that's where you're going. Do you agree with our list? I lied to you here. I love every second. Which 1960s actor do you think is the most iconic? I wouldn't even pay for my bullets. For more classic top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. Go. You're only supposed to blow the bloody doors off.